Hi everyone, it's Vicky. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I share frameworks and mental models on clear thinking and clear communications. And it seems like you guys are interested in business frameworks. So let's talk about them today. Don't work hard, work smart. This is the mantra we hear all the time, but what does it really mean to work smart? In management consulting, I learned that while everyone is scrambling, trying to figure out where to start, trying to figure out how to start, trying to figure out what they need, you already have a game plan. You already have a direction. You already know exactly where you want to go and you know what you need to get the job done. To be able to do that, you need a toolbox of frameworks that already give you structure, that already help you see the complex problems in front of you in a simplified way so you know how to tackle them. So let's talk about 10 practical business frameworks that you can use immediately to simplify your thinking solve problems efficiently, have a direction of where you want to go and know exactly what you need to get things done. This video is sectioned into four parts. The first one is consulting problem solving frameworks. The second one is on visualizing the problem. The third one is brainstorming the solutions. And the fourth one is structuring analysis. We'll go through specific frameworks for each of the sections. Of course, there are more than just 10 frameworks out there, but I'll use this to give you a general overlay of what's out there and you can let me know in the comments what you're more interested in and we can explore from there. Section one, consulting problem solving frameworks. Management consultants, strategy consultants, they solve million dollar, billion dollar problems in just a few weeks because they are not operating with the normal problem solving models. The three we'll talk about today are hypothesis driven problem solving, the Pareto principle and MISI. Number one, hypothesis-driven problem solving. Sounds fancy, but it's really just talking about using the scientific method to solve business problems. You come up with the hypothesis, you make predictions, and then you carry out experiments to test if your predictions were correct. With any business problem, usually we have an incomplete set of facts, right? There are gaps in our understanding of what is going on with the market, what is going on with our competitors, what's going on with our customers and their behaviors. And so how can we make decisions and solve problems when we don't have all the information we need. If you want to work hard, you go out there and you gather all the data there is and you try to build a case from the ground up. But if you want to work smart, then instead of doing all of the bottom up research, you want to start from the top and go down, which means that you want to come up with a hypothesis of what might be true. Make an educated guess based on what you already know. And then for the gaps, you want to make assumptions about what might be there. And then you go out there to test your assumptions to see if they're correct. If they're correct, then your hypothesis is likely to be true. If they're not correct, then you can adjust your hypothesis. So it's a more dynamic way of solving a problem. Problem. Let me give you an example. Say you run an ice cream shop and your profitability is a bit low and you want to improve that. So how do you go about doing this? First, take a look at all the facts that you have, right? You know when you're selling the ice cream, your customers love your ice cream. And then you look at your books and you think, okay, I really cut as much cost out there as possible. This is the leanest I can be with my business. So how can you improve profitability? Well, you can probably make a few assumptions here, right? Revenue equals price times volume, the number of units sold. So you think, well, my price is pretty standard, very competitive. So if that's not a problem, there must be the number of ice cream that I sell, that I'm not selling enough ice cream per day. And you think, yeah, I think I can probably produce more ice cream per day. So maybe then it's a distribution problem of not enough people are buying my ice cream. And that will be your assumption. So so you go out there and you test. For example, you can think, well, if I ran an influencer campaign, let's see if more people come and buy my ice cream and if I can make this more profitable, right? There are different ways that you can test this assumption. And because now you have a direction of where you think most likely your problem is at, you can solve that problem more quickly. So with the hypothesis driven problem solving, it's really important to understand what is it that you already know, the facts, around your problem and what are the assumptions that you are making so you can go out there and test them. This way of working gives you a very clear direction of what you need to do exactly. And for those of you who are interested in mental models as well, you'll see that this is applying the first principle thinking. I also explained the first principle thinking in this video so you can check that out. Now that you're thinking in a hypothesis driven way, for most companies, they have constraints. They have constraints around the time that they have, the resources they have, 
have the capabilities that they have. So usually people want to prioritize. And to prioritize, you use the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. For those of you who's been around for a while, you're probably sick of me talking about the 80-20 rule so you can skip to the next framework. And for those of you who are new here, the 80-20 rule is really one of those life-changing frameworks. This will maximize your effectiveness. This is a rule of uneven distribution where 80% of your results only come from 20% of your efforts. And the remaining 20% of the results come from 80% of your efforts. This is classic, don't work hard, work smart. Focus on the 20% of your effort that will give you 80% of the results. So in the context of business problem solving, you usually have multiple solutions that can help you solve a complex business problem. But these solutions are not created equal. Some have greater impact on the problem, some have less, even though they do still help solve the problem. Let's go back to our ice cream example, right? To improve profitability, technically there are endless things that you can do. You can cut costs, you can increase your marketing, your sales, your PR, you can increase your R&D, you can increase your price, you can do all sorts of things in order to improve profitability. But again, all business face some sort of constraint, right? You don't have enough money, you don't have enough time, you don't have enough people, you don't have enough capabilities to do all of these things. So you must prioritize. The question you want to ask yourself is always, out of all these drivers, which one is likely to have more impact? Which one is going to be that 80-20 that's going to take me the least amount of time, resources, and give me the most results? Now, if you have a lot of business frameworks in your mind, you actually know the answer. What is that 20% of your effort that's going to give you 80% of the results for profitability? Research has shown that usually by increasing the price, you'll get three to four times more benefits than if you change change the volume, change the number of people who buy your product or the number of products that you sell. So pricing is the 20% of your efforts that's going to lead to 80% of your results. It's a lot easier to update your price from $3.99 to $4.49 and see what happens than it is to pursue marketing, to pursue sales, to try to get your ice cream into a supermarket of sorts. Now, even if you didn't have that business framework in your mind, by thinking in the 80-20 way, by understanding that the all solutions are not created equal, all you need to do is just a quick Google search. How does cost affect profitability? How does pricing affect profitability? How does volume affect profitability? And just Googling this, you'll see in the results, they tell you pricing has a three to four times bigger impact. So even just with these two frameworks on how to think about problem solving, you can't already stand out amongst your colleagues, right? While your colleagues are spending days without a direction, trying to understand what could possibly be the best solution to improve profitability, right? They're trying to understand the company, they're trying to understand the customers, they're trying to think about, is it marketing? What kind of solutions we can do there? Is it PR? What kind of press release do we need? Is it Pricing is cost cutting, what should we do here? You have a solution that's going to make your boss's life so much easier. You present a clear option that is backed by research, credible research from the Harvard Business Review, saying why your solution works. And you have a clear plan that says we need to test assumptions one, two, three in order to see if this is correct. It takes the guesswork out of which solution out of all the possibilities should we choose. And it only took you, what, 10, 15 minutes to look through the existing facts and do some Google searching. Not bad for working smart, right? Now let's move on to framework number three, MISI. It stands for mutually exclusive, comprehensively exhaustive. This is a framework to break down problems. When you break down something complex, you want to make sure that it is mutually exclusive. So there are no overlaps and comprehensively exhaustive, meaning that it's complete. You haven't left something out. It sounds a bit convoluted. So let's go back to that ice cream example and think about how we broke down the problem. Now, the way that your colleague did it was not messy because they were trying to brainstorm possible solutions. But again, as we've talked about, there are endless iterations of these solutions. And so there lacks a structure. And the boss wouldn't know, like, are we missing something here? Is this a complete list? 
It's messy and it doesn't think through all of the possibilities that exist out there. But the way you did it was messy. Why? Because you said, okay, profit equals revenue minus cost. And you looked at both revenue and cost, right? So already there's nothing else to profitability, either a revenue problem or is a cost problem. And you've identified, okay, it's not a cost problem because we said we are as lean as we could be. Okay, so it's a revenue problem. And then within revenue, you went ahead and looked at revenue equals price times the volume. It's messy, right? There's nothing else to revenue other than price times volume. So again, Again, you stand out because you're using these frameworks to give your ideas a structure. Frameworks sharpen your thinking and help you work smart. Now, let's look at more tactical frameworks that you can use specifically to solve problems. Let me know in the comments below if any of these frameworks you think are really helpful, has changed the way you think about problems in any way. If you learned anything new, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be sharing more of these and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.